All right, this next mic is the most different mic I have to demonstrate. It's the only dynamic microphone I have available to me, and that means it's less sensitive and even more important that you stay up close to it because it's not soaking in sound like the condensers. It's only picking up the sound that is being actively delivered straight to it. So you really got to be right up on it, make sure that it's pointed at your, at your mouth. The microphone I'm talking on now is a Shure Beta 58A. It's a hypercardioid stage mic, and this is very popular in stage for live audio productions, usually music, because it's really good at um, listening just kind of real close, listening for what the sound is right here and really rejecting sound as a side. So as I move side to side, you can tell that there's a, a dead spot on this mic. Um, hypercardio hypercardioid is just a little bit different than cardioid. It's got a little bit straighter and longer pickup area in the front with more rejection on the side and a, a little bit of a hot spot in the back, but that's not gonna make a whole lot of difference. You'll also notice that not only do I lose audio when I move side to side, but on this one, when I move back, here I am uh, two feet back and then four feet back, that this has a big difference in the, in the sound. I won't talk too much while I'm back there because you can't hear me very good. Um, and so the dynamic microphone, again, it's not soaking up sound, it's just getting right what was delivered on it. So you have to be real careful about being up close and present. But the advantage here is that it's not going to pick up all the extra sounds as, as much. So if you're recording in a place that has a lot of extra sound, maybe other people moving around like a, a cubicle or an office space, or maybe you're going out into the field, you're interviewing people at a, at a store or at a conference or things like that, then this can be really good for isolating just the subject you want to hear and really rejecting all the other sounds. Right now, the guy next door decided to do his lawn mowing. Um, I don't know if you're hearing that or not. Let's hear it. Let's listen to the room with this microphone. In here, I can hear the computer fan a little bit and I can hear the, the gardener down the street. Um, but I don't know that you're picking it up on that one. So that is one of the nice things about having a less sensitive microphone because it is just focused on the subject in front of it and less so on uh, all the extra sounds in the room. Now, one of the things that makes this microphone different is because it is a professional stage microphone, it doesn't have a USB cable. It has what's called an XLR cable. It's, a, it's the standard audio kind of cable. You've probably seen it with the three prongs. Um, and because of that, then I also need, as you can see on the slide here, uh, an audio interface. So I have an XLR cable going from the microphone into the audio interface, which takes that electronic uh, sound information, turns it into computer data, and sends it to the computer through the USB cable. So we, as we're getting up into the more professional stage and studio microphones, you do need to have that XLR cable, uh, you do need to buy a separate stand for it, and you do need to have an audio interface that takes that XLR connection and then has a USB cable into your computer. Again, keep in mind that one of the unique things about this is that it is a dynamic microphone, so it's less sensitive, but you can find USB dynamic microphones in that $100 to $150 range as well. So if you like that idea of rejecting all that extra sound, having a little bit more punchy sound, I think it's a little bit more punchy kind of radio style, radio style sound, if you like that, uh, but don't want to upgrade to the expense of uh, a USB um, interface and things like that, then look for a dynamic USB mic.